Hello guys, we are back with our next tutorial. In this tutorial, let us go through scheduler criteria. So basically, schedulers we have already discussed. So in the next tutorial, we'll be going through some types of schedulers and we'll be going through the algorithms, guys. So that's the reason why we, we will be using these words there. So basically, what are the things that a scheduler should do or the CPU should do? So basically, there are six criteria, I think, so almost six or seven. So exactly six. Fine. CPU utilization. So what is CPU utilization? So, okay, let us take a small example. You have just bought a mobile phone, guys. So, the first thing that you want to do on a mobile, you will be playing games, you will be using WhatsApp and many, many things. You will be playing games and you will be doing many, many things, right? So, you will try to utilize it in the maximum way, right? And, uh, okay, when you want to buy a new mobile again, this mobile you are using from the past one year. Okay, so, and you want to buy a new mobile. So, before buying the new mobile, you will be thinking that, did I use this mobile properly? Did I use it completely? Like that you'll be thinking, right? So the utilization should be high. That is the best thing for a CPU or for any kind of thing. So CPU utilization, using CPU for the maximum extent. So basically from 0 to 100 free range, 40% will be the light usage and 80% will be the high usage. Fine. So now I hope everyone got a small idea on CPU utilization. So now let us go through throughput. So what is throughput? Throughput is nothing but the, it is used to measure how much amount of work is done in a particular amount of time. Okay, so for this also let us take a small example. So whenever you connect to an internet, they will be saying that it is 20 Mbps per second, 100 Mbps per second, 1 Mbps per second, 50 Kbps per second. What is that? It is going to measure the amount of download speed or upload speed with respect to some particular sum so that is nothing but this so to measure how much amount of work done in a unit time for long processes we will be measuring in terms of hours for short processes we will be measuring in terms of minutes and seconds fine okay so further moving on turn around time so these are the four things that you should remember guys turn around time waiting time burst time response time these are the four things that you should remember the four words and the four definitions it's must Okay, so the first thing is turnaround time. So turnaround time is nothing but time taken to complete a process. So let us assume there is a P1 process. Okay, it's time taking for a completion of a process. It took almost 20 seconds to complete the process. So basically in computers we will be saying with milliseconds. So let us assume milliseconds. So the total time it took was 20 milliseconds. So if it is less, it is best, right? Yes, so the time taken for a process to execute or to completely to complete the process it should be really less so we are having a small formula turn around time is equals to completion time minus arrival time so let us assume a process p1 which came to the cpu at 7th millisecond and it completed its process at 12 millisecond so how much time it took for execution it is nothing but the subtraction right the total time or the complete time minus arrival time what is the result guys it is 5 right 5 so this is our total time sorry turnaround time fine the time taken for a particular process to complete so now let us go through waiting time so waiting time is nothing but the time taken by a process in waiting for waiting in ready queue fine so waiting time is nothing but so let us assume a process came at 0th second and it got execution at the 7th second so what did it do in this middle 7 seconds, right? 7 minus 0, yeah, 7 seconds. So what did it do? So it is just waiting for something, waiting for some other process to complete or it is waiting for resources. So basically waiting time is equals to turn around time, the time taken for a process minus burst time. Okay, you can do it in this way also guys, it's also correct, fine? So burst time is nothing but the time taken by that particular process. So let us assume a process will be taking 7 seconds and it completed at 177 second. So indirectly it is wasted its 170 milliseconds guys. Sorry, 170 seconds or milliseconds. Fine? Okay. So now let us go through burst time. Okay, I think we should discuss burst after that waiting. Okay, it's fine. I hope everyone understood it. Burst time. So it is the time required by a process to complete the execution in CPU execution. So how much time does a process need? So let us assume P1 needs 7 seconds only. So that will be our burst time. Fine? So what is a response time? The time taken to get the first response or the first output from a thing. 
is nothing but our response time so these are the few six important words or scheduler criteria you should remember so basically the first two are cpu utilization and throughput remember cpu utilization and throughput should be high and the rest all should be less wait turn around time should be less waiting time should be less burst time should be less and response time also should be less so at that time you can say that cpu is utilized really well fine okay so in terms of algorithms we are having totally seven types of schedulers guys so the first type is first come first serve shortest job first shortest remaining time first priority scheduler round robin scheduler multi level queue scheduler multiple feed multi level feedback queue scheduler so in individual videos from now on we'll be taking these seven schedulers so almost in the next seven tutorials we'll be covering all these seven schedulers those algorithms with some small example the algorithm is nothing but i'll be just saying you a single line exp explanation guys it's really easy fine okay so in the next tutorial we'll be starting with fcfs first come first serve so let us meet in the next tutorial thank you thanks for watching